Hello and welcome by the Arcade Saga. My name is Hilkion Wiersma and today we're going to uh, unpot and repot some uh, Miltoniopsis. Well, actually, I have uh, three that need uh, needed doing. One I already did. Um, I will show some pictures later on the video because it uh, was in a very bad sh uh, shape. So I hope uh, I can save that one. Uh, so that one I already did, and I didn't have my camera fixed. The uh, I didn't have the uh, proper um, uh, SD card yet, but now I do, so I can film these guys. And this one, I hope you can see, it's around there. For example, it's starting to make uh, new roots. So that's why uh, we're going to repot this one. And I'm just very curious to see what's what's in the pot. And this one. What a beauty, right? Beautiful blooms. Um, I saw a, a slug underneath the pot about two days ago. It was just sitting underneath there. So yeah, this one needs to come out as well. Um, I don't see new roots yet, but it has to come out because I don't want to have slugs or snails in the pot. And the funny thing is, this one has already pumice in it. So um, it will get more pumice, <laughs> definitely, of course, uh, in my case, because I love the pumice and uh, some synthetic. But first we need to get them out of the pot. So I will uh, set up uh, the tripod uh, properly with the camera in a uh, hopefully good uh, position. So let's uh, start unpotting them and let's see what we have in the pots. So we now are out. Uh, or at my uh, potting table. I have the camera in a different uh, direction. It's now on the right hand side of me. And I think by the look of it, it's a, a bit better uh, shot for you guys. I hope so. I'm just trying out here stuff, but I think it's nicely in frame. Um, this one I'm going to uh, unpot and clean up the roots on camera as much as I can. The other one probably not because otherwise the videos will be uh, way too long. But just to give it a general idea what I do, well first I get out of the, st the stakes out. And this one was already uh, out of the pot. Oh, that one as well, I see. So I did already do that. Not sure why at this stage, but... That was a good reason, I think. <laughs> one new growth here and one new growth there. So we have two growing directions on this one, which is beautiful, of course. Let's uh, put that pot to the side and try to uh, get it out of the pot. We have uh, another new growth, a uh, new root here as well. So this one should uh, transition into a new setup uh, fairly well, I think. I'm just going to turn it around so the new root tips are facing downward so the media doesn't fall on them but maybe maybe around them but i hope that does the least amount of damage to them at least that's what i'm trying we have some roots underneath the pot they do look a little bit darkened so i'm not sure if they are alive anymore uh, let me check it feels like one of them is keeping the holding the, the pot <laughs> yeah it's this one so I'm breaking that one because otherwise I couldn't get it out of the pot so let me put the pot aside so far this is uh, really looking uh, well it says beautiful uh, root system so we need to keep an eye on that the coming months to see how that goes. And I hope you can see, but a lot of pumice in it. So that's uh, what I see more often these days with the uh, Miltoniopsis here in the Netherlands. Maybe uh, where you're from as well, but I didn't see it a few years back. Then it was more coconut husk and... Um, Spagnum moss, but these days it's a lot of bark com combined with uh, with pumice. So that's that's nice. That uh, is also uh, I already knew how my arcs responded to pumice, but that's a, an indication that pumice works <laughs> for me at least, because they start using it for uh, these younger plants to get them to grow and to bloom, and then sell them, of course. So that's for a reason. And 
yeah, if they use the same sort of media that you have, that's probably uh, a nice suggestion that you have a uh, good media. Of course, it always depends on your environment. Because that uh, coconut husk or that coconut fiber that looks like a regular up-putting mixture for your uh, garden plants and etc. That stuff doesn't work for me either. I don't think for many uh, orchid growers. But for the nurseries apparently it does work because they use it a lot. And I'm just slowly wiggling and moving stuff around and trying to loosen up the roots as gently as I can. Miltoniopsis uh, don't like to be repotted, as you probably know, but they, they can handle it, but they just don't like it. And just try to wiggle out as much as I can. And this one has a uh, plug still in it. And it's a sphagnum moss plug. I don't know if you can see it, but this is a uh, that sphagnum moss. So let's try to get it out. And yeah, to get them to grow, to start uh, the plants, the seedlings, it's it works. But then it starts to uh, degrade, and it's it then it becomes very uh, acidic. And that's not what we want, obviously. But this one has, uh, like I said, a beautiful root system. Compared to the other one, came from the same grower, but probably bought in. That was terrible. I will, uh, like I said, show some pictures on the end of later on in this video. Not necessarily on the end of the video, of course. But <laughs> so yeah, I have one finger in the roots and just uh, trying to work my way downwards. If it's really doesn't want to go any further, I just stop and I try another spot and wiggle them, try to get them as loose as I can. And I feel this one is stuck there, so I, and then I leave it and I try to another spot. And slowly but surely they will, uh, will more come uh, apart. Not all, because this is very tangled up. So I probably leave that because there's not much media there. So, and then I try to get a piece of the plug around here. Oh, this is that uh, cocoa fiber stuff that I uh, mentioned earlier. It has both. It has sphagnum moss and this. That happens more often. I'm not sure why. Maybe they started it in one and then added on later another part. But these, step, these are uh, basically two uh, seedling pots, seedling... Uh, uh, plugs, I should say. So I'm not sure why that is, but doesn't matter. It needs to come off Bo uh, both, uh, both of them. So uh, let's wiggle over here because I see a lot of media there still. And the nice thing is that I can leave the pumice. I have a root here. As you can see on my finger there, that's attached to a piece of uh, pumice. In this case, I can leave it <laughs> because I use uh, pumice. And that's, that doesn't happen very often when you grow inorganically uh, and self-watering. But like I said, nowadays with the Miltoniopsis, I see that more often. And here's a lot of media, so I wiggle the roots. Pull them a little bit while I wiggle, just to see if I can get them down uh, to go downwards and loosen up. And this is a bit of a process, of course. So uh, I'm just taking my time here because these roots are beautiful. And I try to use them as much as I can. But loosening them up is, uh, is not a bad idea at all, just to get more air in and they've been packed up really in this uh, pot so I probably go up a little a bit of a size and so far I don't see uh, snails or slugs or anything but obviously I can miss them because they are not always that visible for the naked eye so I will give this a nice spray of hydrogen peroxide later on even though this one wasn't the one that I saw that slug on but still 
And these two do not come from the same nursery. The other one, the white one I saw, I saw you saw in the beginning of this video, is coming from a different seller. With the snails, but anyhow, I see quite a lot of bush snails on the, the Miltonia abscesses. So, yeah, to spray it, I need to be to have uh, room for those roots here, of course, to hit uh, to let the hydrogen peroxide hit those roots, the base of the plant as well. So therefore, we need that media out of there. So we try our best. So I'm not sure if everybody likes these type of videos. I think when you're starting to grow them, it's nice. But when you have quite some experience of your own, I can imagine that me teasing around in these root systems isn't the thing you're really watching for. So if that is the case, I sort of apologize. But I, on the other hand, you probably also understand that for the newers, newcomers here, new subscribers or people who are interested in Growing Miltoniopsis probably want to see what uh, what we uh, or what I do before I uh, let them settle in my uh, growing conditions and growing environment. But uh, yeah, it's a little bit uh, of a job, of course, to get it done. So later on, you may be uh, more interested if if you don't can be bothered watching this. But it's a very important part. Of growing successfully so I, I I cannot skip it and I like I said a few years back about five years I think four or five years when I started to uh, get uh, uh, my interest uh, in uh, get getting interested in uh, same honey potter <laughs> whoops semi hydroponic and self-watering I obviously watched a lot of uh, repotting videos just to get a feel of it and to know if it really was something that I uh, could manage uh, to get going here in my environment. So yeah, then these videos are very handy. Or you just uh, like the video and just uh, give me some company. Thank you. <laughs> I really enjoy uh, making these videos. Um, what do we have there? That's some pumice. So, so far, I have most of it out. Let me check because the sphagnum moss I try to get out as much as I can. Some bark. You can see I have some bark left. That's okay. I didn't have problems with that, leaving that in. But too much sphagnum moss, yeah, it's not good. So try to get a sphagnum moss out as much as you can. And of course, with the bark. You will try to get out as much as you can as well, but if you have some uh, pieces here and there, it's not the end of the world. But moss, yeah, I don't need m much moss to uh, get it too ex uh, acidic in a, in a pot too soon. It starts to uh, degrade, obviously, and then your pH will drop, and that's a bit too much. So this is it. What I now will do, I will flush it under the tap um, and then I will uh, clean up the plate, obviously. And alcohol, just in case. Little spritz. You never know what's happening here. Whew. Yeah, it's, a little <laughs> it's definitely alcohol. I can smell it, but... Um, yeah, just cleaning up and uh, let's get the Miltoniopsis. So we're back at the operating table. And I just, uh, well, uh, a few minutes ago, I did give this a, a very spritch of a uh, very good soak of hydrogen peroxide. And uh, I did make a close up with my mic. So this is what you should hear. Almost a bit remind me of a baking uh, chicken or something like that. It's a very close up, don't. So if you obviously with my uh, ear, it wasn't as strong, but that mic did pick it up uh, quite well. So it's 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 almost uh, uh, sounds like it's uh, like a uh, really baking, but it's not not really, of course. So it's nothing uh, 
uh, that the roots can take but I just wanted to let you uh, hear the sound so if you hear that if you use hydrogen peroxide on your roots something similar uh, sound a little bit less strong I, I believe and uh, you should be uh, be fine so I just hold my mic very close to this but just to give an a, a, a idea so that's now had his soak uh, of hydrogen peroxide like we said so let's have a look at where we want to put this orchid in okay so yeah this uh, looks a little bit like a mess but it all has a purpose of course let's start with the uh, pot that i'm going to use i found these uh, these type of pots to be very uh, cheap and to in a, be in a local store so that's why i started uh, using them uh, because yeah i need quite some pots they are a bl black black grayish if you compare it to the backdrop that looks more black more darker anyhow it's the color that i like and i have this uh, inner pot just an orchid pot i did use it already indeed i did clean it off but it is uh, discolored and that's okay it doesn't matter it's been dry for months that's important then uh, everything uh, you don't want dies off like bacteria etc water meter and this uh, comes out oh it comes completely out <laughs> uh, that's not the, the plan obviously so I'm not sure can I put it back right in I don't believe so so yeah these come with these things and this meter obviously need to be attached to this one so let's put it back in very quickly and I'm showing you this so you know what to expect if you start using these guys it can happen let me see now it needs to be back through that little hole there which is obviously a bit of a pain but there it is can you see it so this is how it uh, looks when it has nice water in the reservoir and it will go down accordingly to uh, the orchid drinking the water and evaporation of course so let's put it back now it should work properly yes there we have it okay and for this I, these days i like to uh, still use my synthic that's not new so this is the synthic if you are curious um, but i had a few so i'm going to redo this part because i have my gloves and they start to annoy me uh, at a certain point so uh, but everything should be clean now so yeah I li like to use the Cintiq and this the pumice obviously and it's the larger pumice I mix those two together what you get then it's um, I should say 60 parts uh, and 40 parts uh, Cintiq if that makes sense so not too much Cintiq not 50 50 it's a little bit too much I think just just a few Cintiq pieces around through the pot from the bottom to uh, upwards to get that moisture in the pot and this will uh, keep it airy the pumice the big pumice so then you have um, a very nice humid pot obviously not too wet because you didn't use too much synthetic but also there enough air around the roots and I, I think they uh, really enjoy it so um, yeah that's I started doing that with my zygos and now I start doing that with my Miltoniopsis as well so what I first do is I put a layer in of this uh, big pumice that does make some noise I'm sorry but it has to be done <laughs> let me grab it out of the out of pot first so you can hopefully see it a little bit better let's put it there So just a start of a layer this is about the size of the reservoir will be because the roots on this Miltoniopsis here aren't used to this setup so just to be safe I just put them above it so they can adapt and hopefully start to branch because that's what we want we want those branches to go into the reservoir and around the pot so the other uh, roots not and then I start grabbing some Cintiq put it around just loosen it a little bit up like this some strains here and there Cintiq and as you can see it's really lay, laying on top of the media just 
a little bit of thomas over that to start with once again it looks like this now just laying on top there very very loosely as you saw <coughs> i apologize so let's um this one has a beautiful root system obviously so it needs to uh have room to put a root. That's why I go with this size of a pot. Normally I, I like to go a little bit smaller because I do have more pots of that size. That's basically the reason because uh, when you grow semi hydroponic or self watering, the size of the pot doesn't matter much as long as, as you have it evenly moist. So that's the, so you can uh, grow as big as pots as you basically like because this orchid will start to make uh, those roots into uh, water roots as they say so uh, adapted to a very uh, humid water sometimes they grow directly in the water uh, uh, surrounding basically so what I put some um, Cintiq there it was around the roots once again very loosely I think this is a nice vision so we can better see what I'm doing here in a pot so just a little bit of Cintiq, as you can see, just want to loosen this up. This is very uh, soft and lightweighted, so it will not damage your roots, also the new growths. If you are, uh, yeah, you need to be a bit of gentle, of course. Don't push it in there. Just to let it basically fall down. Grab some pumice, and the same story, just gently in between those roots. Oops, there was a piece almost falling on that new tip. That's not the plan. Don't want to damage that, but I only have two hands. So one is holding the plant, obviously, and one is uh, getting the pumice. But I could use at this uh, point always a, a third hand. But yeah, luckily I don't have that. That would be a bit strange. <laughs> well, on the other hand, maybe it would, would be convenient. I don't know. Anyhow, rambling. <laughs> Let's put some sinting in again. Just there, once again, loose. And I keep repeating that because it's very, very important. And that's from experience, you guys. Because I saw they liked the Syntax so much. And I was so enth enthusiastic about it. Because I thought, yeah, finally they're growing roots. And I put in Syntax, Syntax, Syntax. And that was way too much. And then you get that rot and the orange rot. Since I did this, I should knock on wood. But since I did it, I think it's now two years. I ha never had orange rot again. I should not knock on wood. But yes, seriously, you guys. It works. I'm not saying this is uh, the way to avoid it, but I just noticed I, I just don't have rot anymore with my uh, Miltoniopsis and other orchids as well. But Miltoniopsis are known for uh, getting that uh, orange rot, so to speak. Oh, so to speak, so that's how they call it. And it looks very orange, so this does make sense, obviously. But yeah, I didn't have it for years now. And before that, always. So it's just also a very important, uh, whoops. Once again, that new roots, I want to save those new root tips. But um, once again, if it is in bad shape, not happy, the orange rot kicking in is more likely to be happening. And that does make sense. So try to uh, get them as happy as you can. So I now put some Cintiq around as you can see, hopefully, those new roots, they love the Cintiq. So let's, uh, but I don't put it directly on it if, if I can avoid it, because that's not always what they like, because those root tips were basically still growing in the air before it did get a potted here. So I, I just try to give them some room to choose which way they want to grow, if they want to grow in Cintiq or maybe they like the pumice a little bit more. I'm not sure how they work, but I try to give them as much uh, choice for themselves. So what I now need to do is just to wiggle the pot a little bit and let everything fall into place. And so far everything is nicely in there. Let's see, we have a bit of air gap there, so I'm pushing it a little bit downwards. 
It was, I don't know, but this is not, it's not completely a uh, clear pot, so I don't know if you can see it, but I'm just slightly pushing it down. And I have a bit of Cintiq here that I can put there in that hole once again to get it evenly moist when I water it. So pump is in there. And again, a little bit in the back and that may do it. Wiggling it again. It's very uh, loose in the pot because I potted it up very loosely. Those roots weren't attached to this media yet. So it, yeah, it's a bit top heavy and obviously I still, oh, you can see them now. Let's zoom out a little bit. Oops, that's zooming in, zoom out. I still left those spikes on. So those are very heavy and that makes this argot move a little bit more. Uh, sometimes you can leave them on when they have new roots. Uh, I will watch the bulbs. As soon as I see shriveling, I will cut them off. But I did have it happen with one that didn't need to uh, have the spikes coming off. But if you're not sure, just take the spikes off because you want to grow this plant and then eventually it will, uh, will bloom again. But nowadays I just have a look at the plant and uh, go from there. So I have a, whoops, a stake here. It's actually a knitting needle which I use because these are coated and I just buy the cheap ones because they are normally hollow inside. I just bend this point so if I don't get it in my eye or anything, <laughs> that would be uh, not so nice. So I put it in the back of the, on the back of the orchid. Let me show that. So just uh, try to find a way and to avoid new roots. So I see a bit of a hole there and just wiggling it and trying to get it as deep in the pot and we now at uh, the bottom I can feel the pumice over there that layer of pumice we put in and let's see no I'm not going to use a spike to tie it to the stake because like we said we may uh, need to get those spikes off and then I have a problem with the stake again because well, let's use this one for a change. I didn't have uh, a nice wire prepared, but this one will do as well. Oops. Normally I have my beautiful other green wire, but this is green as well. So it should work. But I just tied some leaves there. And you could tie the bulb as well, but most of the times I just tie some leaves in there, not too, uh, too heavily, just fairly loose, but enough to uh, keep it there, obviously. It's hard to explain, but you will get a feeling for it. So the last thing that I need to do, and that will help uh, uh, leaving it, uh, uh, getting the orchids uh, to uh, stabilize, to get stabled a little bit more in the pot, I should say, I'm sorry. I try to do several things at one time, talking to you guys, figuring out what to do. <laughs> yeah, then it's uh, you getting this, me searching for the words. Anyhow, I uh, like to do a top layer of pebbles, put my hands in front of those new roots there, and we have some here. So hopefully I can avoid um, damaging, damaging them. Whoops, let's put the leaf aside. So because the pebbles are quite heavier than the rest, it helps to stabilize the plant in a pot as well. But that's not the main reason why I use it. This is uh, for not uh, to avoid a top dry layer that most of our people that grow semi hydroponically or cell watering are getting quite often. So this layer here about two centimeters is dry while the rest is very uh, damp and to avoid this Annabelle came up with this the idea Annabelle from the orchid room is to put a layer of pebbles on top of it and it works it works wonders and it uh, helps the orchid stabilize even a bit more this will stay top heavy because of the spikes uh, but it's now very nicely suited uh, in there I think I also think <laughs> that this video is getting 
firm quite long uh, again. But yeah, I wouldn't uh, want to skip out of this. I think it's a nice uh, uh, process. But I will do the other one and then we have a last look and I will uh, show some pictures because there was something to say about that cream yellow and Miltoniopsis as well. So uh, let's, uh, I will finish this up and then I will see you uh, with a last view of these orchids. Before I uh, start flossing them, just a quick look. This is the other Miltoniopsis I just finished uh, repotting. So you have a nice, this has a clear pot, so therefore I thought let's show it, but you have a nice vision of how I built up. We have some Cintiq here, but in the back uh, we have some Cintiq there, but then I didn't use as much Cintiq because uh, uh, yeah, the, the chances are that we don't get new growths on the back side of the orchid, but more on the front. So that's how I keep that back a little bit more drier, I, at least I think, than the front. Some pieces, and this is around and inside of the pot, so it's a little bit of layering. And again, first layer, about two centimeters, is just for the reservoir. And I just have a root uh, above that. So I hope it will branch. And this one was making new roots as well. I didn't know, but I saw probably two inside of the pot. So who knows? It wasn't uh, that uh, um, bad timing for this one uh, at the end. And these blooms are getting over. I see now spots. I didn't notice that. I didn't. But so yeah, this spike is soon to be over. Uh, and that's okay. It can then can grow on in its new setup. So welcome at D-Sync, uh, where we have two orchids, the both of them. Uh, I'm going to floss them before I put them uh, back to their uh, new home, basically. <laughs> I use RO water and a little bit of this stuff, this uh, seaweed. Algamic is this called, but it's basically uh, the same. And Biobis, the brand I absolutely love. So this is uh, very easy to get my hands on in, uh, in Europe especially in the Netherlands, and I think it goes uh, all the way uh, to Europe. And these days it's also in America, and I think they have the El uh, Algamic already there. Maybe uh, all the products, but uh, around one, two years ago they didn't have everything uh, in America yet, but nowadays I think they have. So if you like, try it out, it's, it's beautiful, it works fantastic. So I have a little bit mixed up, just about a drop. I think five milliliters, something like that. I'm sorry, just, it took me a moment just to give you a, a, a proper measurement. I did fill it up. It's three liters, little little less than a one gallon, one one big drop. Yeah, I call it a drop, but it's a, yeah a five milliliters, something like that uh, of this uh, alga mic. And I put it in here in. So this one has a. Uh, nice uh, point here so I can uh, put it easily on uh, into my uh, pots and just start flushing it so we get some nice hormones in the pot as well while we uh, flush and I check um, obviously the water it's not that dusty at all so that's beautiful uh, let me pull that leaf away let's do this one as well whoops this was and then the battery decided to uh, give up. Uh, I have a secondary one, but that's also in need of some uh, extra power. So yeah, I get the clue, you guys. We need to uh, get this going. <laughs> Video is already long enough. So yeah, basically uh, try to get uh, all the pebbles as well. They are a little bit dusty sometimes. And here we go. Just nicely flushing that beautiful water through uh, the pots. So let's put them up uh, in their new home and, and let's uh, revisit all of them. So I did grab the camera in my hand so we can have a, a bit of a better close up. So yeah, these, uh, I think these look beautiful. Beautiful. These pots are a little bit bigger than I normally use, but uh, I think they will be fine. Look at that beautiful root. We just uh, did manage to uh, save that one. Next to it, it's this white one, this beautiful white one. And I don't have a name for this one, so maybe if you recognize it, please let me know. I think I did uh, found an idea for this one. I think it's the uh, Miltoniopsis Hygim Ono Maui Falls. Uh, not completely sure, so I will uh, remind you uh, of that when I do updates. But for me, it's very handy to have at least one name. 
uh, for my notes. So therefore I uh, just use his name even though I'm not 100% sure, but I think it's at least very close. And uh, I like this more than giving them numbers. It feels so unpersonal and I'm really happy with them. So I like to give them a uh, name. If I really can find a name, I uh, most of the times make a name, uh, yeah, make uh, one up. But yeah, help me for this one. Maybe you uh, don't have the XLD, but just a nice name for it. I'm into that as well. So uh, don't, uh, don't be shy, let me know. <laughs> I really would enjoy to give this a uh, proper name. Then next to it, and I'm, I apologize, I don't remember your name on top of my head, but one of my subscribers did mention this name for this one. Miltoni Yap says Hogger Cream Yellow. And I know that that uh, subscriber, once again, I, didn't, I don't remember your name on top of my head, but um, from top of my head, uh, is a, a, I think it's, uh, he grows Miltoni Yap very well as well. So I, I think he's definitely know what he's talking about. So thank you so much. And I mean, Miltoni Yap on one label with the word yellow. Who would ever thought that I would uh, get that in my uh, growing uh, room? So anyhow, this one, um, I will show you some pictures because it was very, very sad. I did cut off the blooms, not the spike, the blooms, uh, because there's some energy in the spike left. So I hope that will help. But firstly, let's have a look at the, the how I uh, did on Party Arcade and what I found. So yeah, as you can see, there was a lot of media left inside of the pot. Barely any roots. It was just a disaster and it was wet. It was, it was just not good. And I saw that because the pseudobulbs on, on this arcade are um, fairly uh, small in comparison to the rest of it. And so yeah, I, uh, I just needed to take it out. Did cut off the blooms as we just saw. And um, yeah, this started to put it up. And so far those roots are not have a nice color on them. But I try to uh, keep an eye on it, let it dry up, try to uh, basically water it as I would do when it was in, in uh, organic media until I see new roots and then I will fill, fill up the reservoir. It only gets seaweed water or all water with seaweed and that's it. So you can see it's not that nice looking, but, but hopefully it will, uh, will come back to life. And just very quickly on the end of this video, uh, like for this one on the right, this is a rescue that I did and it looks very nice now. It's the bread, uh, yeah, Breadless Brilliant. Beautiful new growth. So it is doable and next to that I have another one that I uh, is now making a spike. Let me hold the camera a little bit different. I am apologize. So you can see it a little bit better. Still not great, but it's getting better and it is making new roots quite a lot. Cintiq with moss and the excellent moss, of <laughs> the natural moss does like the Cintiq as well. So we, uh, we all are friends with Cintiq apparently. So yeah, you guys, probably a bit uh, longer video, but I just wanted to make this one. Oh, and actually this one is from my uh, last repot of a Miltonia. So look at the amount of blooms. Stunning, and this is the one that it was in this vi that video as well. Beautiful, right? So, this is uh, the setup for basically how I start with my male Tony Opsis. And you can see I uh, did start to rebloom them uh, for the last uh, year, year and a half, quite, uh, quite well. Actually, two years now, I can say, but um, yeah, I'm happy. So, I hope this uh, video is helpful. As usual, if you have any questions, please uh, leave them in the comment section below and I will uh, try to answer them, as, uh, answer them as good as I uh, can. For now, thank you for watching and I really hope to see you at one of my next uh, videos. Bye bye. Whoops. <laughs> Blooms. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs>